Good morning, everybody. Uh, today, we're going to give you a run through of the Pinterest pixel. Uh, and that seems to be a bit of a game changer for a lot of marketers because Pinterest are opening up uh, the way that they do business in a very similar style to Facebook. So you can expect to see a Pinterest equivalent of business manager. And also, you can expect to see audience sharing, I would imagine, across the two platforms. Uh, and there's some commonality between the two. And and it is very striking that Pinterest have chosen to do things in the way that they have, uh, because it is very, very similar to Facebook. Uh, so that's you know not an accident. That's That's an intentional thing. So if we run through how Pinterest have chosen to do things, uh, and I would say as well, if you're going to use the Pixel Perfect app, we will support Pinterest. If you already have uh, a solution for Facebook Pixels and you're not that bothered about using Pixel Perfect for Facebook, you can switch off the Facebook Pixels within the app. So you can turn them off and it will just fire the, the Pinterest Pixels. Or you can turn off Pinterest and just fire the Facebook Pixels. Or you can have them both enabled and have the app do Facebook and Pinterest for you. So looking down at, at the events that we can track with the Pinterest tag, they're calling it page visit, um, which is the Facebook equivalent of that is view content. Uh, and it's saying you can use this for audience creation and conversions, yep, all the usual things. The view category event, uh, track people who view category pages. Basically, in Shopify terms, that's collections. Uh, so you can track people who viewed collections, and when you pass information for that event, you can say what the collection is using the Google product code. Um, so it could be apparel and T-shirts, or uh, you know that that sort of thing. So there's some commonality creeping in here with the Google product category that now it knows what it is in Pinterest and it also knows what it is in Facebook because it's it's using common language across the pixel event. Uh, search, yeah, usual thing. Add to cart, yeah, usual thing. Checkout, yeah, obviously you'd expect to see some, uh, some data for checkout. Sign up, lead, yeah, all the usual things. Custom is interesting because you can create your own events. And typically, we, we would use this sort of event for niche tagging. So in a pet store, we could tag a cat or we could tag a dog. Uh, but they, they put the ability in there to do that. Uh, Partner-defined event, again, I guess niche tagging, but it's saying that uh, it's... It's basically just for you. It's not common across everybody. So it, it, you, know, you can use this. It's just information that means something for you to track in your stats. So it would be specific to you in your own store. Uh, it's given us some examples of code down here. Well, it, it's strikingly similar. You know, you've got the, the, the Facebook script. Instead of FB uh, in it, FB track, you've got pin track. Uh, and then the event data, the payload data, which is contained in the pixel. This is where it gets quite interesting. Property for a brand with multi-property. So I guess that would be maybe brand or product type. Uh, we'll have a look at that and we'll have a little little bit uh, more detail on that at some point. The product name, the product ID. This is interesting because uh, there is no product catalogue that I'm aware of as yet in Pinterest. But then there wouldn't be because Pinterest itself is the product catalogue. Um, so it's trying to marry up the product ID with the product ID of the pin. So it should should know what, what you've actually bought. Uh, there's no variant ID that I can see. Uh, unless that's a little bit further down. But it tells you the, what the variant is. You know, it's the red one. Uh, okay, I'm going to shut up. It's right here. Variant ID. Uh, so we've got the product and we've got the variant. Product category, shoes, uh, the brands, the order quantity. Promo code's interesting. I, I don't remember seeing promo code as a standard field in uh, in Facebook events. And video title as well. So if you're viewing a video, 
it's uh, it's taking the title of the video as well. So there's some interesting stuff in here. Looking at the the way it's implemented, you've got the the base code, which is the the not the same as Facebook, but it's the the same type of thing. So there's a piece of code that fires up front, and then the events further down fire after that. And you've also got for people that don't implement JavaScript, you've still got the actual one pixel uh, piece here, which you can Im implement. Most people are just be implementing JavaScript, which would be a two part. It'll be the first part, and it'll be uh, the tracking piece after that. So quite interesting stuff here. Um, looking at this, it is going to be impossible to implement this with static code. You are going to need an app to do it. Uh, I don't know if Shopify will ever implement this in the way they have with Facebook, so you can literally just whack the, the Pinterest ID and it'll do the rest. I think they've probably been bitten by that and, uh, and will not implement that, but we'll see. But you can see the complexity of it here. It's it's pretty complicated stuff, uh, and the thing with pixels is they are getting increasingly complex. You know, you could put static code there. There's not going to pass any of this stuff, you know, and it will pass it for one product only, unless you've got a loop of code there that loops through all your products and passes all of them. Uh, yeah, video, watch video. Interesting. I wonder if Facebook are going to implement that. So, real interesting stuff. This is really interesting. They've given a callback. Now, d developers out there will know what that is. Facebook do not do that. So when you fire an event with Facebook, you've got no real way of knowing if that event is fired because Facebook don't tell you. Um, and Pinterest are telling you by the looks of it. So when you fire the event, there's a callback URL that will tell you whether it's successfully been passed or there's an error where it hasn't been passed. This is gold for developers. So now we can actually say with 100% certainty that the pixel event is fired. Facebook, you can't do that because they just don't tell you. Um, so it's kind of a best guess. So really interesting stuff in the uh, in the Pinterest pixel. Uh, watch out for that in the Pixel Perfect app. Those of you who have got the app, just turn it on and you've got Pinterest pixels. Um, those of you that only want the Pinterest pixel, install the Pixel Perfect app and turn off the Facebook Pixel. Uh, so you can have one, the other, both together. Uh, watch this space, it's interesting times ahead.